In this tutorial, I want to talk about 2020 paper two, question three, part A. And part A here, it's all about trigonometry. Now, we've been given the following diagram and we've been asked to find the distance from F to G. In this case, what we should do before we, before we carry out any sine rule or cosine rule or anything like that is just fill in the angles. We know so much about this triangle just from the angles involved. If you look at the triangle from E to the base here to G, you'll notice it's a 90 degree, you'll, you'll notice a right angle triangle. That's 90 degrees and this is 5 degrees. The three angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees, so 90 and 5 and 85 add up to 180 degrees. So immediately I know that that angle is 85 degrees. Now, if you look at the angle here and the one on the up other side, they obviously form a straight angle. So they have to add up to 180 degrees. 180 minus 85 is 95. So I can deduce that that angle is 95 degrees. Now, once I know this is 95 degrees and I can see this one is 52 degrees, then I can deduce that the angle up here is 33 degrees. Now, uh, there's only two other angles, so we might as well fill them all in. If this angle is 52 degrees, I can work out this one, because I know that these two angles for are 180 degrees in total. 180 minus 52 gives me 128. So I can deduce that that angle must be 128 degrees. And then finally, there's only one other angle that I need to work out. This one is 35 degrees and this one is 128 degrees. So if I subtract those two from 180, I'll work out that this angle here is 17 degrees. So now I haven't really done any, carried out any maths here. I've just glanced at it and I filled in all the angles. And it just makes my life a lot easier now. Okay, now the question is to find the distance from G to F. So obviously the triangle we're going to use in order to find the distance from G to F is the triangle H, F, G. That's the only triangle I could possibly use to find it. However, this is a non-right angle triangle, and I don't know any of the sides. If you only know the three angles in a triangle, there is no rule. There's, it, we, none of our rules, the sine rule or the cosine rule, you have to know at least one of the sides in order to use it. So at the moment, there's nothing I can do with this triangle H, F, G until I find one of the sides. So what I want to do is use the triangle E, F, H. And the reason I want to use this one is because I know one of the sides in this triangle. I know the distance from E to F is six meters. So I can use the sine rule in order to find the distance from H to F. If I get the distance from H to F, then I'll start to talk about this triangle, which is what I want to do anyway. I know that I want to use the sine rule in this triangle E, F, H because I know a side and the opposite angle. I know the side, if the side is six meters, the opposite angle is 17 degrees. And if that's the case, I can use the sine rule. The sine rule tells me that A over the sine of A is equal to B over the sine of B, where the capital A and the capital B are the angles, small a and small b are sides. So in this case, the side I'm gonna use first is six. I can say that six over the sine of the opposite angle, which is the sine of 17, is equal to the distance hf over the sine of its opposite angle. So in this case, my b is going to be the distance from h to f over the sine of the opposite angle, and opposite hf is the angle 35 degrees, so it's sine 35. Now I've got one equation and one unknown, so it's going to be easy enough for me to simplify this down and find the distance from h to f. Once I have the distance from h to f, I'll simply use my sine rule again, and I'll get the distance from f to g. So we had 6 over sine 17 equals hf over sine 35. I decided to eliminate the fraction on the right hand side by multiplying both sides by sine 35. And you get hf is equal to this, plug it into your calculator, and hf works out as 11.77. So now I know the distance from h to f is 11.77, so now I can concern myself with the triangle that I'm actually interested in. The triangle that I'm interested in is the triangle h f G, because I want to find the distance F G. Once again, I can use the sine rule in order to do it. I know that I can use the sine rule because I know a side and I know its opposite angle. So if I sub into the sine rule again, A over sine A equals B over sine B. The first side I'm going to use is the side 11.77 over the sine of the opposite angle, so the sine of 95, will be equal to the distance F G 
over the sine of its opposite angle, which in this case is the sine of 33. And now, finally, I have an equation with fg in it. And I can just simplify this one down in the same fashion as the last one. All I need to do here is multiply both sides by sine 33. If you multiply both sides by sine 33, the left-hand side becomes 11.77 sine 33 over sine 95. All I'm going to do now is plug all this into my calculator and get my final answer from the, for the distance from f to g to two decimal places. So when I plug it all into my calculator, my final answer for the distance from f to g is 6.43 meters. Okay, in part b, we're given a large circle s and a smaller circle c. And the two circles touch internally at the point c. And the center of the small circle is d, and we're told, we're given the radius of the smaller circle is r. Now, we're told that the ratio of the area of s to the area of c is k is to 1, and we're asked to find the value of k. Or in other words, basically that just means get the ratio of the area of s to the area of c. And if that's the case, we should think about the formula for the area of a circle. The formula for the area of a circle is simply pi r squared. So I need to get pi multiplied by r squared for the large circle and pi multiplied by r squared for the small circle and compare the two of them. However, it's completely pointless to do that unless we can get both of them in terms of the same variable. The variable in question here is r. The radius of the small circle is r. So I want to work out what is the radi radius of the large circle in terms of r. What is the radius of s? in terms of this distance. So what we're concerned with, what you should focus on, first of all, is the distance from O to C. I want to work out what is the distance from O to C in terms of R. Now you should recognize that we already know a bit of it. The distance from D to C, I could also label that as R. So if my goal is to find the entire distance from O to C in terms of R, what I need to do is try to find the distance from O to D in terms of R. And it's, it's relatively straightforward to do that. If we look at the right angle triangle from O to D to the, ta to the point of contact of the tangent, this is a right angle triangle. And the one piece of information we were given in the question is that the angle here is 60 degrees. That entire angle is 60 degrees. But obviously, since OB and OA are both tangents to the smaller circle, it's perfectly symmetrical. If the entire angle is 60 degrees, it must be the case that this is 30 degrees and this is 30 degrees. So if you look at the right angle triangle now from O to D down to here, we know one of the angles and we know the opposite in terms of OR. What I've said our goal is to find the distance from O to C in terms of OR. So I'm going to start off. I want to find the distance from O to D in terms of R. And in order to do that, I just think back to my junior cert trigonometry. I remember from junior cert trigonometry that in a right angle triangle, the sine of an angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. If we deal with that in this case, the sine of 30 is equal to the opposite, which is R, over the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse in this case is the distance from O to D. I am loving the look of this equation because I now have an equation with OD and an OR in it. If I manipulate it, if I play around with this equation, I'll be able to get OD in terms of OR. So the first thing I would do is multiply both sides by the denominator and I would get OD times the sine of 30 is equal to OR. Now, if you look at page 13 in your maths tables, you plug this into your calculator, you'll work out that the sine of 30 is equal to a half. So in fact, this actually means that OD multiplied by a half is equal to OR. If I want to get OD on its own, I will multiply both sides by 2. If I multiply the left by 2, I get OD. If I multiply the right by 2, I get 2 OR. So that tells me now, the distance from O to D in terms of OR, it's 2 OR. It's twice as big as the radius of the small circle. So that distance, the distance from O to D is 2 OR. And I said at the start of the question that the distance from D to C is OR. We can see that. It's clearly from the center of the small circle to the edge of the small circle is OR. So happy days. Now I can say that the entire distance from the center of the large circle to the edge of the large cir circle is 2OR plus 1OR, which is 3OR. 
So the radius of the large circle is 3 or, while the radius of the small circle is 1 or. Now I'm equipped to get the ratio of the area of the large circle to the area of the small circle. So let's say I want to get the area of S to the area of C. According to the maths tables, the area of a circle is calculated as pi multiplied by the radius squared. So, my, if to, so the formula I'm summing into is that area of a circle is pi or squared. The radius of the large circle is 2 or plus 1 or, which is 3 or. So if I subbed in, the area of S in terms of this or would be pi multiplied by 3 or to be squared. Well, the area of the small circle is really straightforward. If you're summing into this, we're labeling the radius of C as or, so it's simply pi or squared. So the radius of the small circle is just pi or squared. Well, the radius of the big circle is pi by 3 or to be squared. Now, 3 or multiplied by 3 or gives me 9 or squared. So in fact, the area of S in terms of this dimension, or, is 9 or squared pi. And the radius of C is simply 1 pi or squared, or or squared pi. Now, both of them have a pi and an or squared in it, so I could divide both sides by pi and by or squared, and it would work out that the area of S is nine times as big as the area of C. In other words, the ratio is nine is to one. And then this brings me back in the question, it said that the ratio of the area of S to C is in fact K is to one. So obviously, I can simply conclude here that K must be equal to nine. So that's your answer for question three, part B.